Hey, how's it going? Um, I just got a package in the mail for hand, from Handheld Legend. I didn't. I, I bought a lot of stuff from um, like retro modding, and then there's this guy, Lord of Gaming or something, um, who has an eBay store. But I've never bought anything from here, so um, I was looking through. I was gonna looking for some things to modify Game Boy Advances, but um, instead I found something cooler. I think which is <clears throat> what I'm going to be building in this video, which is a, a Game Boy macro. Um, and so I'll, I'll, I'll open this up the rest of the way in, in a sec. So basically, it's, uh, it's based off of the um, Nintendo DS, and it's all about removing this top screen and only utilizing the bottom part. And then, more specifically, only utilizing the... Um, old Game Boy Advance port um, in the bottom. So um, I picked up this for like, uh, I, I think it was like between 15 and 20 bucks on eBay. And this is gonna be my donor one. And I chose it because um, specifically the broken hinge. Um, so anyway, let's see what they gave us. Gave us, I wish they gave it to us, but they didn't, I mean, I'm going to get five views on this video, so it doesn't matter. Um, so I, what I ordered is, um, I thought I would do sort of like a kind of a flashier one uh, than I have in the past. So I'm going to do, uh, this is going to stay black. I didn't, gosh, is this, this camera's just freaking out. Um, so I have the black and I'm going to replace all the buttons with red. Um, so I, I bought a whole kit even though most of these I'm not really going to use. Um, so I'll just be using this and then the A, B, X, Y, the shoulder buttons. And I don't know. I think they gave me a volume slider. They did. Um, they gave me a vo volume slider and a power switch. Um, I'm not sure I'm going to use those. And I'm not going to replace this either. Or that one so I want it mostly black with just some like nice little red highlights um, I think I might keep the black buttons too but um, you know these seem like pretty good quality I don't know that there's a lot of companies uh, making this stuff it's it's not like the Game Boy Advance or some of the other older models that people mod a lot more um, I think that this one maybe has a little less popularity um, you know, so they, they don't have as many resources. So I think most people get the same stuff from China, um, and that's just fine. Uh, we also have a replacement sticker right there. I'm not going to use that because I have. I'm going to keep my. I'm going to keep the original one. Maybe I don't know. It's a little banged up. But anyway, then I also got uh, I got this uh, resistor, and that is for an LED that I'll be soldering to the board, um, which. So far, in all of that, that'll be this is going to be sort of the most ambitious mod in that respect that I've done to any Game Boy. Um, then finally, um, is this this acrylic rod? And um, come on, focus, man. So what's cool about this is when we take off this, when we take off the the lid, <clears throat> there will be a void here, and so. Um, I think with a lot of people doing the mount mods to the Game Boy Macro, they'll remove these. Um, sometimes they'll remove the, the Y and X buttons too, and they'll fill it in with like uh, body filler or something like Bondo, I suppose, um, and smooth everything out. I'm not going to do any of that. I kind of I like this. Um, so we're going to have this acrylic rod, and we'll be shining an LED through that. And what's also cool is that it's going to diffuse through here, as well, I believe. So uh, we'll get the power indicator and we will get this. And it will be, I think, really cool. I'm going to be following a tutorial off of handheldlegend.com and, um, you know, uh, maybe changing things up as, as I see fit just for my own preferences. I'm just going to jump to the future when I'm ready to solder and stuff. Oh, if you do want to know how to take one of these apart, I do have a video um, right up there. And you can watch me take apart and do a full case mod or a, a case replacement on one of these. So um, anyway, see you in a bit.
I, I kind of had to abandon this as a how-to video, and um, which I guess I can edit it so you guys don't even know that, but um, it's just sort of like my, this is my first go at it, and I'm learning what works and what doesn't work about doing the um, Game Boy Macro mod. So ultimately, um, <clears throat> I, I, I did some soldering on the board, and I've never done anything like that. That's actually not entirely true. I've, done, I've tried it one other time, and I tried to um, solder in a new power switch onto a Game Boy Advance motherboard, and I think I wrecked it. Or it was wrecked before, and there's nothing I could have done to actually repair it. <clears throat> um, I'm all ready to um, reassemble it, and I'm, I want to go through now and just... Uh, sort of explain the steps of what I did because I, I didn't show you any of this and um, what went well and what didn't. So um, I guess the first thing will be putting together this and inserting the acrylic rod, which will um, be acting like um, sort of like a, just a big fiber optic for a, a, an LED um, in this. So um, it'll glow basically. It'll glow that way because it'll shoot the light up. Um, so when you first get this, you have to drill that out. I used like a quarter inch drill bit. I used a quarter inch drill bit to drill out that hole and I went a little too far. And so I went into um, one of the holes for uh, the screw that holds this in place. The screw can go in and it holds it so-so. I'm considering a, a putting in like a, I don't know, like a little bit of super glue just to make sure that it holds super duper well. This doesn't work. I'm going to give up. Um, with an injection molded uh, plastic, it's like, it just seems like, well, I think plastic in general, if you scuff it, it's immediately apparent, you know, it's, um, and so I don't, I don't want to cut stuff if I don't have to. Um, well, as you can see, I just like, I just pushed that right in. So I think I am going to have to do just a little bit of, um, of super glue just to like make double sure that it will stay. Okay, well, oh gosh, it's, it certainly won't be going anywhere now. Either will its brother. So, <laughs> oh geez. All right, so that's going to dry and that's going to be a okay. Wait, did I get this tightened in enough? Yes, I believe I did. All right, so um, this is in, and now this is. Uh, also evidence of my very first mistake. And so uh, what, what I really, really wanted to do is I wanted to have a front facing speaker. And so I took my Dremel tool and I cut out a space for the speaker to sit. And I did a really good job. Um, if we, like if I say so myself, you know, uh, if we take this, you can see, um, it, it fit in right there. It's like it is recessed. It it would have been lovely. I would have had. I was going to cut in a speaker grill right there, or just like drill some holes there so the sound could travel through. But um, as you can see right here, this is the really big mistake. This is the bubble that was left behind when I overheated or went a little too deep too quickly and so um, that's a bummer but this is I think one of what will end up being I, I think there's I'm gonna do another one of these I'm almost certain so um, I'll be able to I'll be able to fix that later so that was like my first attempt at cutting for a speaker area and there just wasn't enough room that's what it came down to I could not cut any more out of this and and I couldn't fit it above the motherboard. Okay, well, oh gosh. It's, it certainly won't be going anywhere now. Either will. 
its brother. So, <laughs> oh geez. All right, so that's gonna dry and that's gonna be a-okay. Wait, did I get this tightened in enough? Yes, I believe I did. All right, so um, this is in, and now this is uh, also evidence of my very first mistake. And so uh, what, what I really, really wanted to do is I wanted to have a front-facing speaker. And so I took my Dremel tool and I cut out a space for the speaker to sit. And I did a really good job. Um, if we, like if I say so myself, you know, uh, if we take this, you can see um, it, it fit in right there. It's like it is recessed. It, it would have been lovely. I would have had, I was going to cut in a speaker grill right there or just like drill some holes there so the sound could travel through. But um, as you can see right here, this is the really big mistake. This is the bubble that was left behind when I overheated or went a little too deep too quickly and so um, that's a bummer but this is I think one of what will end up being I, I think there's I'm gonna do another one of these I'm almost certain so um, I'll be able to I'll be able to fix that later so that was like my first attempt at cutting for a speaker area and there just wasn't enough room that's what it came down to I could not cut any more out of this and and I couldn't fit it above the motherboard. Um, so that being said, uh, I think I'm basically ready to start putting everything into the guts, which I guess brings me to the second part where I cut things out. And that is this. Um, in the Handheld Legend um, tutorial, what they have is um, they have the speaker going, I guess, up into the slot on the motherboard and kind of peeking out. Like when you flip it over, you could see the, the speaker coming out there and then they hit another speaker right in there. They took out the stylus uh, protector holder thing. Um, and I, I didn't like that. That looks a little janky for an otherwise really cool build. Um, and so I, I started digging around after I, I failed the first time. My, my second option was right here, and I thought this was a good option because um, I could make the room. Um, without the second screen, there is no, um, there's no need for the, the DS cartridge. So I actually removed that off the board. And so with that removed, I'll be able to fit a speaker in there perfectly. And so there was, there was, no, there was no worry about it being obstructed because I know that there is room for it. I mean, if it can slip into that space, there certainly is room for it. So uh, what I did is I sort of uh, traced out where that was. There is some kind of strengthening ribs along here at the back, and uh, I cut them out. And I cut them out using this. I just go vertically down and then sort of slide across. Then I, I sanded this smooth, um, as smooth as I could. Now for these holes, um, you'll notice um, they're nearly perfect. And uh, the reason I was able to get nearly perfect uh, was something that I saw online that somebody did, uh, which was use the previous speaker holes. So that the top cover, as you can see on an untouched DS, um, we have these nice little holes there. And so I just cut out that thing and I held this in place and unfortunately I just it it shifted slightly and so it's imperfect um, if you look on the back it's more obvious because there is such a nice straight line for the top of the Nintendo but I think that I will notice it but not many other people the other thing I did was to try to make it look as nice as possible so I tried to um, round off the edges there a little bit. You can see it's sort of rough. I used an X-Acto blade. Um, maybe what I might use is um, the, there are drill bits that are basically just like um, come to a sharper point and they're used to 
sink in screws or to, to make an area where a, a flathead screw could be recessed into a board um, without just brute force. I think I would use those in the future just to clean those up a little bit. Um, the knife was not the best idea. Um, so now I am ready to uh, continue uh, with my building of this. Now, um, as explained in many, many, many tutorials, there are, um, they explain how you need to solder things in. And so we have um, LED A and then LED C2, A2 and C2. This is something that you have to, um, you have to short those two points if you want this to work at all. Now, there are a lot of modifications that um, don't use an LED and they don't use this bar. They take these things off and use Bondo or something to smooth it out. And to be honest, they like none of them look good. It all looks janky. You're not doing good work with Bondo, guys. Like, it's lumpy. You, you can't get these nice edges. Like, just use what you can. Like, especially something on the front. Like, the, the holes on the back are acceptable because nobody's going to look back there. If you're trying to make this look as good as, like, that or, like, this curve, you're not going to be successful. So I that's why I really, really like this solution. Um, the only other option I could see, the only other useful option, would be to create your own. And I, I mean, people have done that, and that looks better. Um, but anyway, um, people do this without, and you need um, like a 300 ohm resistor or something. And that's what I think this is. 300, I don't know. I don't actually know anything about electronics. So don't take my word on this. Um, but we short it, and essentially what that's doing is that's making it seem like there's the top screen. I guess the top screen creates resistance because electricity has to flow through it in order to power it on. So this imitates that. The diode, the LED, that's just something bonus that you're able to put in. So um, what you really want, um, and I, I'm, I might be totally wrong on this, but electricity flows from the positive to the negative. And so what you want is um, you want the, the resistor first and then going into the positive side of the LED. Um, why that is, I do not know, but that's what it was told to me. Also, um, there's two speaker channels because the DS games, uh, I guess some were stereo or, I mean, they just utilized the two speakers. Um, the audio for uh, Game Boy Advance is um, mono. And so I don't, I want it clean. I want this built clean. And so I'm going to fit in the one speaker. And I think that that will be sufficient. Um, and so you, um, you can just do left or right. I think it'll work just fine. Um, and then ground it. There is a contact right here. And you can see the little, can you see it? Can I focus on it? There we go. You can see the little negative spot. Don't judge my, don't judge my uh, poor soldering. So anyway, uh, what I have to do now is I have to get everything seated in. Um, before I do that, though, I have to kind of, um, I have to affix this speaker in. And so I want it semi-permanent. So uh, I'm gonna get this in place uh, like so. I think I'm just gonna use, oh, you know what I should use? I gotta get it heated up anyway. Um, I'm gonna use some hot glue. I mean, just a little dab on both sides of a little bit of hot glue. All right, uh, it's all heated up. So I'm just gonna do sort of like a little dab. So I'll put one down here. Yeah. And then, uh, I don't know, one right here. I'm not super concerned about it being like the most stable thing in the world. 
I mean, it does have to stick though. Um, and so the reason why I'm not overly concerned is that um, there's going to be something else. I mean, it might rattle around if it's not. All right, look at that. It's looking good already. Um, after I removed the DS uh, cartridge slot, um, I cut this off and um, I, I'm going to be putting this in place right there. And the reason that I'm doing this is because the you'll be able to look in there and you'll be able to see if the cartridge is that, you know, if that backing is there and I don't want to show the motherboard and I, I do actually want to somewhat protect the motherboard. And so by, by reusing this, um, I think it'll maintain a somewhat finished look as well as uh, serve for some level, not a great level, but some level of dust protection, protection. All right. And I think that's good. I wish I had like a little Q-tip or something to sort of smush this down. Oops. Look at that. Oh, geez. That's why you don't mess around with that. Next thing that I want to do is uh, take and put the screen in. I kind of wiped it down with some alcohol. Um, I'm not taking this plastic off because I can't get it back on. And it's that finished look. Uh, a lot of the builds, a lot of the builds, they take off the touch screen and personally I don't understand that um, you can still use it first off it, the, the function the touch screen function still works uh, if you if you want to use it and it's like it's just another layer of protection for the screen um, if you consider I mean I'm not sure that I don't know that it has glass like the like the top one has over it. So I'm leaving it on. I think that it'll be better. You can, this will be, um, this bezel will actually be um, at the proper height because I mean, it might only be a millimeter thick, but that means that when this is in, it's not flush. It is gonna be a millimeter closer to the ground or closer to the ground, a millimeter just lower. So um, we actually, I wanna put this in right now um, before I do anything else, because once I kind of get moving forward after this point, things are going to seem, they're going to be getting, a, becoming a little more permanent. And so I want to make sure that um, I'm getting the stuff in that needs to get in, because I have a tendency also to forget about a lot of stuff on my builds. And unlike a Game Boy Advance, this is this just won't be as easy to get back together. Yeah, it's hard to do. I should have done this before. I had glued the speaker in. That would have been wise. Um, we'll see if that actually works, um, because I am going to do a test. Um, just to make certain that everything is working. Um, I did do a test already, but um, now is sort of, I mean, since I'm filming it right now, this is sort of when it matters. Um, or, oh, I got it. I'm going to put it in the game. All right. Um, the default setting for the um, the screen on this is um, the top, and so I, I kind of had to fiddle around. I guess it wasn't really um, acknowledging it because of that. Um, so anyway, uh, I am ready to go on to the next phase of this. And so I do have to get my uh, shoulder buttons installed. And then uh, I will just sort of jump forward in time until or for when I'm um, installing this into place. Um, so see you in a sec. All right. So I got, I mean, what is the most difficult part of 
reassembling a Nintendo DS done, which is the shoulder buttons. And then I got excited and uh, I hot glued the LED in because I forgot to turn back the camera. Turn on, turn back on the camera. Turn the camera back on? No. Turn back. Turn on back. Is on a preposition? I forgot on to turn the camera back. Anyway, um, so uh, all of those things are out of the way. I have my, uh, my speaker in place. I have the speaker wires routed where I want them. This thing I've tested, it turns on, the touchscreen works, the buttons all seem to work, and now it's a matter of getting these wires into place. Now, I made these too long, <laughs> I made these too long. Uh, especially this red one. I mean, this is just like, it's cartoonishly long. It's, I guess there's like sort of this wire holder right here, I mean, but I don't know, I guess as long as it doesn't impede the buttons, it should be fine. So uh, I'm going to start putting the buttons in. And so I got, let's see, I am doing like a little bit of a two-tone thing. So I'm gonna do uh, red. I have a red LED. I have the red um, other button. It's B, B's to the inside, so I think B goes there. It's, it's kind of tough to do all this backwards. A is there. A, B, is X on top? Looks like it. Thankfully they make these things so like just an absolute buffoon can still do it right. Now I am not doing, not doing them fully two-tone as I, you, you may have noticed. I have, um, I have the black button still in place. I have the black shoulder button still in place. I have the black power button power slider thing and the black um, volume slider still in place. Um, I wanted it to be subtle. I didn't want it, I mean, subtle isn't really the right term. I didn't want it to be just all red and black. I wanted to highlight the buttons that you use for the, um, for the Game Boy Advance. Now you do use start and select for the Game Boy Advance, but I did not use those for the reason of it, um, I mean, oftentimes with, I think almost with, well, with a lot of the Game Boys, um, the start and select buttons were actually different. Um, so I'm not, I don't think it'll like be, I don't think it'll clash. I think like the other buttons, it'll just sort of like blend in and you'll know where they are, but you won't have to, um, they won't kind of take over the scene. Like you won't be distracted by them. This is the slight problem with this build because there are, there are new elements. There are new elements that you don't account for, like the speaker and, well, the speaker <laughs> or the LED, you know, these are, um, course what what's ended up happening though is that like I've made the um, I've made that speaker wire a little too short and I've made the LED wires too long um, I think it'll be okay I'm almost certain um, the speaker wire is actually just completely reused um, I did not use I did not I used brand new wire for the LED and all that stuff, but I um, what I used for the speaker was what um, was in the DS originally. So I, I saved I don't know a hay penny. I saved a hay penny. Um, oh my gosh! Wait, no, false. What am I doing? Ah, oh, geez. I forgot to do the screw that would hold it in place. God, I'm an idiot. All right, so here it is all set up, all ready to go. Um, I actually will be taking this apart. Uh, I'll be taking this apart one more time because I goofed up that slider. Um, it actually 
it's not adjusting the volume. It's, uh, yeah, just put it in wrong. Not the slider, the motherboard. Um, but anyway, so uh, everything looks nice and sharp. Um, there are some tight spots. Um, like you can see the LED shine through. This uh, shoulder button, it's a little tight. It's not springing up. And I think that is in large part due to um, the LED. Um, I have that uh, resistor right there and I think uh, when I take it apart I need to adjust that slightly so that it'll click as freely as is that one as freely as any of them really so um, with and you can also see uh, by gluing this back in I do have that nice DS look you can't really see I mean if you're looking for it you can see that speaker but um, otherwise it, it looks mostly um, standard except for uh, this part and this is turns out to be really really cool um, so nighttime playing it shows up um, in person a bit better than it is right now but uh, playing at night this is uh, this is pretty cool looking with that being said uh, I hope you liked this video I was hoping to be a tutorial but really it was just a learning experience on my part um, oh, I guess I should. I'm not sure. If I put this in, it does not detect it. However, if I turn it off and then turn it back on, it is detected. So, um, you know, it's not a glitch, it's a feature, right? Um, but anyway, uh, I hope you liked the video. I certainly liked building this, and I'm going to give this a shot. I'm going to give this another shot. Um, so, uh, yeah, thanks for watching. If you want to subscribe, that'd be cool. If not, you know, do whatever you want. So, uh, toodaloo.